All right, what's going on everyone? Thank you for clicking on this video. Today we're gonna to do a quick overview on the 2021 B Explorer bike from Be Cool Bikes. Now Be Cool offers two different bikes. This is the Explorer and they also offer the B Adventurer. So really the only difference is just the standover height. This has a lower standover height at 28 inches. The Adventurer I think is 31, maybe 31 and a half inch standover height. Really the only difference, all the other specs are the same. So today we're gonna to look specifically at the B Explorer though. And this is a relative newcomer to this 26 by four fat tire category, but it's coming with some serious specs. I'm talking full hydraulic brakes, 750 watt continuous rear motor, front and rear suspension, and also a gigantic 21 amp hour battery. So no range anxiety on this bike. Now this bike is currently priced at $16.99 and I think it's going to make it a pretty strong contender in that under $2,000 price category. And if you've seen me and my channel, you know I've had a chance to ride a ton of this bike's competition. Rad Rovers, Hemiway Cruisers, Cyrusher bikes, Event and Adventures, all bikes that this is going to compete against. And as we go through the bike and we look at all the components and pieces and performance, I'm going to try to draw you know, some comparisons just so you know where this one fits in in the mix of the others hopefully give you enough information to help you decide if the B Explorer is gonna make your short list. Now, before we get started, full disclosure, I did not purchase this bike. It is here courtesy of Be Cool. So shout out to Be Cool for giving me the chance to ride and test and put some information out on the B Explorer for people to use as they contemplate their next e-bike purchase. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, here we've got the B Explorer from Be Cool Bikes. Now this comes in three different color choices. It comes in orange, red, and white. I believe the B Adventurer, you know, the higher step bike, that comes in black and green. So you do have multiple color options if you go with Be Cool Bikes. Now, when you receive the bike, the setup is pretty much the same as all other e-bikes, right? You've got to attach the handlebars, the front wheel, the front fender, put on the pedals, and attach the rear rack. After that, you're ready to ride. Now, I do like the orange color on this bike. The orange and the black just really pop against each other. So it's a sharp looking bike, and it's not you know, a really loud orange or an obnoxious hunting vest, high vis orange. It's when you get in the sunlight, it's got a kind of a silvery kind of, I'm going to call it like a pearl orange finish to it. So it's a pretty sharp looking bike, but let's start making our way through the bike here a little bit. So front tires, 26 by four fat tires, right? And these are Innova is the brand. And, you know, honestly, all these brands feel the same to me. Sometimes you get CST, sometimes it's Kenda, Chow, Yang, Innova. This is probably the second or third time I've received the Innova tires. And I don't really notice a difference between any of them, honestly, other than just the noise level. So these kind of remind me of the Kenda Crusade tread pattern, um, but it is a different brand of tire. It's not overly loud. I mean, you're gonna hear this bike coming, but it was not excessively loud, like the Kenda Juggernaut. That tire is just really, really loud. But these tires did just fine for me. Plenty of grip to go off-road with and they weren't excessively loud on the streets. Now there's no reflective um, you know, stripe around the tire, no lettering around the tire, which I kind of like better. I'm not a fan of the silver stripe that goes around. I think it breaks up the tire too much. When you've got it just plain black like this, I think it makes the tire look a little bit uh, thicker or taller or meatier or whatever you want to call it. Cause I like the fat tire look and these just look extra fat cause the sidewall looks so huge. So I'm happy with the tires. No complaints for me on the tires on this bike. If we spin around here, look at the brakes. It's a 160 millimeter disc brake and they don't have any markings on them, but I did ask Be Cool what brand they are. They said the brand is YS. I'm not familiar with it, but I'm not a bike brake expert. So uh, what I can tell you is riding it, they work just fine. I had no issues stopping the bike. I want to point this out. I do not have a quick release on this front wheel. And this bike was part of a batch that you know, the supplier that supplies the quick release skewers, they miss the shipment. So this bike's got the through axle, the next batch of Explorers that go out, they're gonna have a quick release front wheel. All right, well, let's go look at the front suspension fork here. So there's no markings or anything on the, on the fork. I did ask, be cool, what brand it is. They said it's a Mozo brand. Um, I have no complaints about the fork. It worked just fine for me. What I want to point out that's different than some of the competitors is normally this dial up here, you know, it's got more adjustment in it. It goes click, 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 click. And the more you click it, the harder it gets to compress the spring, right? This doesn't really have that. This is kind of open and locked. It's on or off essentially. So when you twist this dial, it kind of, you can just hear it kind of thud or clunk into place. It's telling you that it's either locked out completely or that it's free to start springing. So no real adjustment in here, basically just on and off. 
This bike comes standard with front and rear fenders. They're a flat black plastic and no issues. They do their job just fine. The bike does come with a headlight mounted right here on the top of the fork, kind of an interesting bulb in there. I'll throw up a picture of what it looks like at night so you can get an idea of the beam pattern. Also has the horn built into the back of the headlight. Now on the front headset, we've just got their, you know, be cool, be graphic. There's no mounting brackets here for aftermarket baskets or anything like that. That's something that I think almost all their competitor bikes in this category have. So it'd be nice to see them add some mounting points there for a front basket. All right, let's swing around to this side so we can start taking a look at everything that's going on on the handlebars up here. So first thing I'll say is, okay, you got a, a cap here in the bar end, which is great. So you can just pop that out of there and put in bar end mirrors if you want. You don't have to worry about cutting through the leather wrap. Uh, they are leather wrap or I guess probably faux leather wrapped grips with the palm rest. This is pretty typical. Most bikes have something similar to this. You've got a twist throttle. I know everyone will be happy. Everyone, most people seem to like the twist better than thumb throttle. So you've got a twist throttle on this. Uh, I prefer that as well. This red button here is a basically a kill switch for the throttle. So this turns your throttle off and on. I don't know exactly why that's there. I only have one other bike with that. I'm guessing maybe it has something to do with certain regulations in areas where you're not allowed to have a throttle on an e-bike. I don't know, but that's what that is. It turns the throttle on and off. Uh, you've got your seven speed Shimano shifting thumb shifter here. I kind of prefer the trigger ones on your thumb and index, but these work just fine. Next thing I'll point out is the handlebars are kind of kind of flat. A lot of the, like the Hemiways and the Rads, they have more of a, a deep bend to them, which I kind of like better because then you can angle the bend so it brings the handlebars back to you like another inch or so. Just makes a little bit more upright, comfortable to ride, but you know, I didn't really have any issue with this. I rode this thing for like three hours yesterday doing a range test and it was fine. Jump over the screen for a second, come over here. So you've got your menu and up and down arrows for controlling your display. And then I haven't even mentioned this yet. I haven't even, didn't even bring this up yet, I'm surprised because I was excited when I saw this on the bike and that is it has turn signals on this thing. So this is your turn signal button left and right. Um, they are, you know, not self canceling. You have to cancel the signal yourself. But that's what this is, uh, turn signal left and right. And of course, horn, which works when the bike's not even on, which is weird, but uh, let me turn this thing on really quick. And I'll show you what the signals look like. So you only have uh, rear turn signals on the bike. So there's your rear turn signal, no front turn signals on the bike. Um, but the tail light here, it's, it's a tail light, it's a brake light and it's turn signal. So it's all of them. This is the only bike I've ever seen with from the factory turn signals. I mean, excluding the moped style ones that are almost like a motorcycle. I mean, the only e-bike that looks like a bicycle I've seen that has turn signals built in from the factory. That's pretty cool. That's, that's definitely a bonus feature that this has got over any other bike I've seen or tested anyway. But you've, be cool, you've teased me <laughs> at this point. You gave me rear turn signals. Now you've left me wanting front ones. There's no front turn signals, so that would be cool. I think if they added front signals to the bike. And then, as I mentioned before, so here's your, you gotta cancel yourself to slide it over. It would be really, I mean, you can't build in self-canceling, right? So that, that would be really hard to do. Don't expect that, but if I'm getting really greedy, I would love to see on here just a little tiny light that indicates that the turn signal is on. So you remember to cancel it because you have to remember to constantly cancel. I'm used to doing it because, you know, my motorcycles, I have to, they're not self-canceling. I have to cancel it. So I'm used to doing that. But think about it in your car. You've got a little light in your face blinking that, hey, you left your signal on because you're inevitably going to leave this signal on like a 90 year old man going down the road, right? Or you've got your blinker on for five hours until you remember to, to cancel it. So uh, it'd be cool if they had a little light there that flashed and let you know it was on. But very cool. I, you know, I've never seen another bike with turn signals. Uh, I wonder if there is a way that you could somehow splice into it and add front ones yourself. All right, well, that's enough about turn signals, but it is a fun little feature that really no one else has. They're the only one that's got that. Uh, now, I'll point this out. So you've got, when you grab the grip, you're going to grab it probably like right there, right? So you can easily work the signals in the horn with your thumb. But if you want to get to your pedal assist, you got to slide over and move. So it's a little bit of a stretch with everything that's going on here to get to your pedal assist, but you know, minor issue. I, given the choice, I'll take the signal thing. I think that's cool having that there. So, but I'll just point that out. 
over on the screen and get a close-up look at all the info you get. I've seen this screen many times. I don't mind it. It's a nice looking screen. Gives you everything you need. You know, your miles per hour, your odometer, battery indicator, pedal assist, and the watt output with four digits. That's nice. You can see if you ever climb over a thousand or not. And uh, you can see I've got 82. I put on 82 miles testing this bike. I, you know, when I go through these bikes, I try to put on a pretty good amount of mileage. Um, I ride them for at least a week or so before I even think about filming anything. So I put 82 miles on this thing, really kind of beating the heck out of it on a few rides. I really put it through its paces to see if I can break anything. And I really didn't break anything on this bike. It's held up well. So that's my current mileage, 82. Uh, you can, if you go to the SW900 programming manual, there's a lot of things you can change in the display. I went in and of course maxed out the you know, max speed, cranked it up to the max. And I did change the amps. Uh, you know, I think it's setting P14, you can change the controller amps, but when I talked to Be Cool about that, they basically told me that the controller, the supplier of the controller, sets it at 22, and you can't change it. Changing it in the display does not change it uh, in the controller, it has no effect. So you're, you're at 22 amps coming out of the controller at all times, no matter what you put in the display. And, you know, with your 48 volt battery, I'm not gonna do the math in my head, but it's probably somewhere around 1,000 watts. The highest I saw, the meter readout was i think 803 it was pretty consistently hitting just over 800 watts all right well let's talk about the battery pack really quick so gigantic 21 amp hour battery pack huge huge battery pack if i'm comparing that to a rad i think they're still using like a 14 amp hour uh, a venton is probably the largest hit i think theirs is 18 hemiways was like 17.5 cyrusher i think was even 13 i think on their 650 so biggest one in the class that i've seen anyway i'm not saying there's not a bigger one out there but i don't know of it this is the biggest one i've tested it has a mega range i did a range test i'm going to do a range test video for you because there were some interesting things that happened but the long story short is i did a range test what i think is the way you're supposed to do a range test which was throttle only and i went out and rode this bike around throttle only and i just for reference i weigh 175 pounds and this bike carried me 41 miles without pedaling bike power only i rode around for almost three hours on this thing covered 41 miles before it finally died so yeah it's on their website they claim 40 to 70 miles you know depending on if you're pedaling or not and true story that is accurate i got 41 miles throttle only out of this bike so if I pedaled like I normally do, uh, I'm almost certain, uh, without a doubt, I'd get 70 plus miles. So you're gonna get some serious range out of this bike. But that's something to really consider. I mean, given what companies have told me recently about how hard it is to get batteries, uh, getting a bike with a huge battery right from the get-go, instead of trying to like add your own and extra one and tie them together, why not just get it right from the start, a big battery, so you don't have to worry about your range. And I think the production versions of the bikes are gonna have the Be Cool logo on this side of the battery. Mine's blank. I kind of get, I think, early versions of these things. I added my own little Be Cool thing here, which, you know, that doesn't come on there. I put that there because I gotta keep track of the different batteries and what goes with what bike. So, um, but I think the production batch is gonna have Be Cool across here. That's what it shows online anyway. All right, let's step back over to this side. Let me give you some quick dimensions on the bike, right? So the, I mentioned before, I think the standover height is 28 inches the ground to the handlebars is going to be 45 inches handlebars are 26 inches wide payload capacity of the bike is 350 pounds so i found this bike comfortable to ride i think i was probably leaning forward a little bit more than i would on a rad or hemiway or an Aventon bike and that's probably due to that bend in the handlebars that i mentioned earlier but you know no problem it's comfortable to ride and also had my five foot three wife sit on the bike. It was a little bit more challenging for her, you know, five foot three is not very tall. These are big bikes. I always like to point that out. It's a very big bike and it's probably out of her comfort zone to ride. She could get on it, but wasn't comfortable with it. And that's what I'm gonna say is probably the biggest thing about these. You have to have the confidence to ride a big bike. So if you're five foot three and you're confident in yourself to ride it, then no problem. You can get on it and ride just fine. But she doesn't have that confidence to ride this comfortably. She would rather have you know, a little bit shorter, lower bike. So the minimum seat height on this is 34 inches from ground to seat, and the max is 41 inches. 
But let's talk about the seat. So very wide, squishy seat, which I like. I'm a fan of the wide, plush, thick, squishy seats with springs in the back like this one. And you know, this is just a reflector here, but very soft seat. I, I like the seat a lot. So, but that's something, you know, a feature you can change out to whatever you want pretty easily. All right, well, let's talk about a bigger feature though. So rear suspension on this bike. Uh, that is something that Rad Rover, Hemiway, Aventon, the Cyrusher 650, you know, they don't have that feature. They're all hardtail bikes. So I, I don't know of another bike in the under $2,000 category that has a rear suspension. I'm not saying it's not out there. It could exist. I, I haven't seen any other ones though, other than the Be Cool bike. So big feature that you're getting with this bike, a rear suspension. Now let's talk about what it's like to ride with this rear suspension. So I found it to be quite stiff. I weigh 175 pounds. I could spring this a little bit. Um, you could feel it. You could feel it working when you're jumping off curbs and riding down staircases and off-roading the bike. I could feel it working and, until it was there. Um, it was noticeable, but it is not uh, crazy squishy like the, uh, the bike I tested from M2S bikes. That one, the suspension was so soft and springy. This wasn't quite as soft. I, I guess maybe you could change out this shock to an aftermarket shock if you wanted, maybe something softer, because there's no adjustment in this at all. It's you get what you get. So, but it looks like it would be pretty easy to just remove these uh, two bolts here and then change that out to something else if you wanted to customize the bike a little bit more to your liking. And I'll see if I can throw up a quick clip of me jumping this bike off a small curb and landing so you can get an idea of just how much the rear suspension compresses when you land. All right, so front chain ring protector is double-sided, which I like, but it is plastic, which I don't. I'd rather if this was metal, you know, aluminum, probably be a little bit nicer. Not a big deal though. And then if we slide back here to your rear derailleur, it's a Shimano Tourney, which I think is, uh, you know, the base model Shimano shifter. I didn't really have any issues with it. Shifted through all the gears just fine. It is a 1428 tooth freewheel on the back, and I'll get a shot of the motor information there for you. It's a 750 watt continuous motor. Still had good power. So let's talk about the power on this bike. Well, let's first talk about how fast you can pedal it. So when I jumped on the bike on a long straight stretch in high gear and high pedal assist, I was able to pedal this thing up to, I think it was like 28, 29 miles an hour, uh, which was pretty good. I, you know, I wasn't pushing as hard as I absolutely possibly could. I was just putting in a decent amount in the pedals and it ran right up over 28, no problem. So compared to some of the other bikes I've ridden, the Rad Rover, I think I pedaled that up around 28 miles an hour, but that was all me. The bike kind of stops assisting after about 25. The Aventon uh, was faster. I was able to pedal that one up over 30 miles an hour, I think. Uh, the Hemiway I pedaled faster, but I know Hemiway's added some recent res speed restrictions on that bike, so I'm not quite sure how fast you can pedal them now. But this one's kind of right in the middle there, right 28, 29 miles an hour. Pretty good, happy with that. Now for the top speed on this bike using just the throttle, no pedaling, I was able to, on level ground, run it up to about 27, 28 miles an hour. That's right about where it it cuts out, well, you kind of hear the motor and feel the motor cut out right at the 28 mile an hour mark, which this bike is faster than rad. Uh, you know, those bikes cut out about 24 and a half, 25 miles an hour. Uh, this is faster than the Aventon. The Aventon bike cuts out at 20. It doesn't go anything over 20 with just a throttle. So this is on par more with the Hemiway, which I don't know the exact speed limit they added to that bike, but it's probably around that 28 mile an hour mark. So it's gonna be faster than Aventon, faster than rad, but probably on par with Hemiway there for throttle only speed. Acceleration wise, I did film a zero to 20 on the bike, so I'll put that on the screen. Of course, you can see how fast it got from standstill up to 20 miles an hour. I would say it's, it's not the fastest, it's not the slowest. The Hemiway bikes, I think, hit a little bit harder off the line, and uh, the Rads probably hit a little bit slower off the line than this. But the overall feeling on this one was a, it was a nice, smooth, gradual takeoff. The motor kicks in very smoothly. I didn't really ever feel it was gonna you know, kick in unexpectedly and, and take me off balance. So as I was riding it around, the word that just kind of kept popping into my brain, I don't know why, was tractor. It just, the bike just kind of tractors right along. It's not really hard hitting off the line. It's not crazy fast top speed. It just feels solid and strong and just kind of chugs along. This bike performed well in the hill climb test. No issues there. I usually try to put the bikes in pedal assist three and mechanical gear four. So they're all kind of consistent. And I mean, it just chugged right up the hill. No problem. I think it was around 13, 14 miles an hour or something like that. Uh, kind of right in the middle of the pack. Same thing when I did the throttle only up the hill. Just, I mean, it made it up the hill 
no problem never felt like it was overworked or not going to make it it just kind of chugged right up the hill uh, to compare i mean the rads were the slowest of course they're uh, like nine miles an hour up the hill normally Hemiways are right on par with this. The Aventon was probably the strongest one up the hill. I think that one hit like maybe 16 miles an hour or so. That one, the motor peaks a little higher. I think it peaks at like 1100 watts. So this is kind of right in the middle of the pack for a hill climb. All right, well, hopefully that gives you some kind of idea what to expect performance-wise out of the bike. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else we missed. We didn't talk about the rear rack at all. Um, so it attaches right here, Allen head bolt right here, another one. Same thing on the other side. You do have to attach this when you get the bike, but no big deal, just four bolts. And I like that it's color matched. Uh, it doesn't look like it's an accessory that was added on later. It just, it looks like it's part of the bike and it's just meant to be there. So I like that look and it is included in the purchase price as well. So uh, something that you don't get with every one of the bikes in this category. Well, I had a ton of fun riding this B Explorer bike all around my town. There's just something about these fat tire e-bikes that speaks to me and I think speaks to a lot of people as well. They're, you know, they're eye-catching the fat tires i think they are confidence inspiring they just they make you feel like you can take this thing anywhere like you're a little bulldozer and you can roll over anything it's kind of like the monster truck of e-bikes right you just want to crush things with these massive tires so you know i find myself all the time just i'm riding down the road and then i'll veer off into the woods or take a trail or uh you know blast through an open field and you can ride through mud and sand and snow and uh, they just you feel like you have more sure footing, I guess, with these these tires. Even in town, I feel like I'm doing things I might not do with regular bicycle tires. You know, I'm hitting mud puddles and potholes and up and down over curbs and riding down staircases and back up staircases. And it just kind of, uh, like I said, makes you feel like you can roll over anything. I think that's what makes these bikes so much fun. All right, well, that was the Bee Explorer from Be Cool Bikes. And I really think this bike is gonna pique some people's interest. Just given the features that it's got over some of its competition. So let me just run through a couple of them. So you've got hydraulic brakes. Not all bikes in this price point have hydraulic brakes. Some do, some don't. You've got fenders and a rear rack included in the purchase price. You've got full suspension, front and back. I can't think of another bike under two grand that has a rear suspension on it. I'm, not saying it's not out there i just don't know of one if you know one put it in the comments so people know about it and don't forget turn signals what other bike at this price point has turn signals built in from the factory and the big thing is that battery pack 21 amp hour battery which is huge bigger than all the other bikes i've tested by far insane range out of this thing 41 miles not pedaling <laughs> just throttle only so huge range out of this bike no more range anxiety with this one so all those features on a bike that, you know, current pricing is $16.99. So you might be saying, okay, well, how are they doing that? How are they selling this bike with more features for the same or less money than others? Well, I don't know for sure, but I'm going to guess it's probably the cost of components that go into the bike. So, you know, you don't have Tektro brakes. You've got YS brakes and uh, you don't have the fine tune adjusting on the front fork. And I don't know what brand of cells are in the battery and, uh, you don't have a Bethang motor. It's a, it's a different brand of motor and there's a plastic front chain ring and all those little pieces like that that probably um, you know, cost them just a little bit less to put those on, which is, allows them to add another feature like rear suspension or an even bigger battery pack. All these e-bike companies create their own mixture of features and components into what they think is the best e-bike, but ultimately it's up to you to decide which combination you like the best and what's going to work for you. So. Uh, tell me and tell Be Cool in the comments. What do you think of the Bee Explorer? I'm sure they would love to have some feedback from the e-bike community. But I think that's all for today. So hopefully you got some good information today that will help you in your next e-bike purchase. If you have specific questions about the bike, put them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them if I know the answer. And uh, I think that's about all. So if you like what you saw, consider hitting subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I will talk to you all later. Thanks for watching.